Building a PC has always been an enjoyable process for me. From the moment your cherry picked PC components have been safely delivered to your doorstep, to the first time you press the power button on that beautiful new case of yours and everything just works. But what if one day you've bought a PC, got it delivered, unpacked it with excitement and suddenly realised you had to assemble it before you can even build into it? How would that make you feel? Well, this is the Geek A50, an ITX case that is delivered to you flat packs like a piece of IKEA furniture that's waiting for you to get down and dirty and test your building skills and patience. Can this be the future of PC cases? Or is this a process we would all rather skip? Let's find out. You're probably asking yourself, when the hell did IKEA start making PC cases? Because the idea of having to assemble a PC case from scratch and then build into it might put some people off as it's just a time consuming process we would rather leave out. So let's get straight into it. After unpacking everything, the first issue I came across is the plastic wrap. It's literally on everything and it's difficult to get off. I had to use my girlfriend's tweezers to peel off the tightly wrapped plastic as it was impossible to do it with my own fingernails. I mean look how much I had to unwrap. I know there are a lot of people out there, including myself, who enjoy a bit of PC case unwrapping, but this is ridiculous. It would have been helpful if Geek just added some kind of tab to the edges to make it easier to pull off the plastic. And I have to say, assembling this case was not a smooth process for me, as I found myself undoing a lot of the work and a lot of the times it was extremely tedious. But for now, instead of me rambling on throughout the video whilst putting this case together, I'll fast forward the build process of the case and then build into it, just to give you guys a good idea of what it's like to do so. And at the end, I'll test the thermals of the case by playing a few games and highlight the pros and cons of this compact ITX case. So sit back and enjoy.
let's jump straight into the thermal performance. I'm playing all the games on ultra settings at 1440p at 144Hz with G-Sync enabled. The single case fan at the bottom is used as an intake and the top two fans are used for exhaust and the CPU, GPU and case fans are all configured to an automated fan curve. Here are the games I tested. At first glance, the thermals are good, especially for a case this compact. The top two exhaust fans play a major role in this as they do a very good job of extracting heat and the temps stay just below 70 degrees celsius. But if Geek were to make a small change to the layout for the intake fan and positioned it underneath the motherboard, you would probably see a further decrease in temperatures as the intake fan would directly cool the GPU and CPU because with the fan in its current location, the airflow is obstructed by the PSU cabling so it's not as effective as it could be. But overall, I'm happy with the thermals for this case. So what are the pros and cons of this case? As I mentioned earlier on in the video, Geek have made it annoyingly difficult to take off the plastic wrap, which I guess can be easily fixed by adding a few pull tabs on the plastic or change how the case is packaged. For the price of the case, the acrylic cutouts aren't the best quality as they are not durable enough, even though this is probably one of the smallest ITX cases for the price. I wouldn't recommend it for portability due to the fact that the entire shell of the case is acrylic and will easily get scratched and damaged when transporting it. There is a lot they can do to improve the case to making building it a smoother process. They should have screw holes in the frames so we don't have to use these annoying little screw catchers, improve the space for GPUs as I couldn't fit my half size graphics card in. I had to take apart the case to fit it and remove one of the standoffs for the GPU cable input. I guess this case was built for longer cards, but you would assume an ITX case being able to fit half a GPU with no problems, but I was wrong. And lastly, the case cost $69, which is a really good price for a case this size, but you will need to fork out an extra $20 for the PCIe riser cable for the graphics card, bringing the total cost of the case to $89, which is a bit cheeky, and it should be free if I'm honest. That, or for $89, the case should be delivered assembled and ready to go straight out of the box. Given the quality of the case, I personally think it looks good. Its minimal design approach to the front of the case is right up my street, and the see-through panels on both sides allow me to see my components is a plus. I especially like the placement of the SSD drives, which hide the boring looking power supply. But guys, what do you think about this case? Let me know in the comments below. So that's it for this review. If you like this video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And all the parts featured in this review will be linked in the video description below. I'm Andy Django. thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.